All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. We're going to start right on time. It is seven o'clock. Um, I have the one and only Laura Nelson, uh, front office rocks. You might have known her as Laura Hatch, but she has happily been married this year and out and enjoying life. But we are blessed to have Laura with us. Uh, Laura and I are friends first and we work together second. Um, she just has some great programs, great training. Every time I watch Laura, uh, lecture. She and I are so in, you know, on the same point. I just love and respect everything she has to say. So uh, Laura has a new book out. If you haven't got it yet, it's Hiring Without Hesitation. Uh, looks like it's green know, screen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but it's Hiring Without Hesitation. And it's just a, a fantastic book. I'm going to recommend that everybody uh, grabs that book. But I've asked Laura to jump on today and just share with us some of the things she's seeing in relationship to her book, uh, which crosses all genres, but really everybody in certain areas of the country are facing the same challenges of trying to hire, find, and keep the best employees. And Laura has systems on top of systems on doing these things. So Laura, I am going to turn it over to you and tell us what you're seeing and take her from here. Awesome. Well, thank you. I'm so excited that you asked me to be on this. So um, I would love this to be interactive. So if people want to put notes or chat questions and stuff, that'd be great. Just a little bit about my background. Um, I have a degree in organizational development, my master's in organizational development. I have my undergrad in HR, never planned to be in dental, got brought into dental. One of the various ways I happened to marry a dentist, got thrown into this wonderful industry and have been doing this now for way too long, 20 some years. <laughs> Um, so I've been a dental office manager. I was married to a dentist all through dental school. I've hired, I fired, I, I, I see what kind of training they give dentists in, in school. And then one of the things that I determined that I thought was missing in our industry was the actual team training, but down to the, how do you present to patients? How do you answer the phone? How do you greet patients when they show up? So, um, I've been in the trenches as an office manager and I've had to hire, I've had to fire, I've had to do all that. But my latest um, book is about hiring because my original job before I got brought into dental was a, a recruiter. I've done administrative recruiting, executive assistant recruiting, and then I was a technical recruiter when the dot-com market was just starting. So I learned a lot in that time frame that I didn't realize how much it would apply to now, but it completely does because when the dot coms, when the internet was coming and all these little dot coms were starting up, you know, everybody was chasing talent. And you couldn't, back then, you had to get trained in like how to code and you had to get trained in networks and software and everything that our kids actually know probably by the age of 13 now, but back then you had to have a degree in it. And everyone wanted that talent. And so you would find a candidate and like somebody would offer them a BMW or stock options and a startup or whatever. So we were chasing candidates. And it's funny because it's kind of like right now, like chasing hygienists, chasing assistants, like trying to get somebody in. So um, a lot of what I apply and what I wrote in my, read in my book about applies to in a good market or not. It's a lot harder in the market that we're in right now. So we can definitely dive deep on that. But I always, always, always challenge every time we come up against any sort of a big hill in front of us. And in this case, it's finding good team members, right? that the first thing you do before anything else, before you run an ad, before you interview, before you anything else, is you gotta check your attitude about it. <laughs> because I, not just our industry, I've talked to various industries where people are like, there's no good people out there. There's just no good people out there. Everybody wants a lot of money. Nobody shows up for interviews. We're hearing it over and over and over and over again. And I'm not disagreeing that that's not the case at times. But if you say nobody's at goods out there, nobody's gonna show up for interviews, everybody wants too much money, your vibe is what you attract. Like what you put out is what you attract. So if you feel like there's no good people out there, you're not gonna find any good people. If you feel like people aren't gonna show up for their interview, and I know it's true, I'm not saying this doesn't happen, but you gotta check your attitude about it because that's the vibe you're putting out, that's the energy. And not to sound all, I'm in California and like all, Wawa, crazy, whatever, but it's true. Um, I went to Starbucks this morning. I would have hired that person who gave me my drink through the window in a heartbeat to work in my dental office. So there are good people out there. I know there's more of a challenge when we need clinical skills, when we need experience, 
we have to get creative. And I'm sure Kelly and I are going to jump into that a lot tonight. But first is checking your attitude, you know, really realizing that it is tough. It's a hard market. Um, there's it, there's a shortage. I, I'm not discounting that. But if you believe you're not going to find somebody, you're not going to find somebody. So I just kind of wanted to start with that, Kelly, because that's that's sort of the foundation of any discussion that I have with this, because otherwise you hear, well, you don't know in my area, in Michigan, it's hard. In Arizona, it's hard. Well, it's hard everywhere. Right. But people are hiring. There are good people out there for sure. Well, let, let's talk about one of those things that, that were big, that has been a quick changing environment. A year ago, you could run an ad, <clears throat> set up an interview in a week or two, and more or less people would show. Now we're hearing all the time, people aren't coming in for interviews at all. One of the things that we've done is when it, within 24 hours of getting an applicant, you should respond to that applicant and set up a time after hours to do a Zoom call to see if they're even worth you know, pursuing if there's an interest. Because one of the mistakes that I've, I have found, Laura, is I invite you in for an interview and I say, hey, can you be here Thursday at four o'clock? Well, you're currently a good employee, so you're working somewhere. You can't leave your boss to come interview with me. So you set yourself up to fail right there. So one of the things I like to do is say, Laura, I would love the opportunity to meet you via Zoom. Is there a day in the next two days where you and I can jump in a Zoom call anywhere between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. to meet each other and see if we can set up a mutual time? And then yeah. once we interview them and we, we you know, meet them, then we set up the interview and get the team involved. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I think that's great. I would say there's two parts that, and this is even not even right now, but two parts of what you just said that I would add on to, because I agree with that 100%. The first is in a good market or bad market or whatever, what I always say is when you're asking candidates to submit their resume, have them do something besides just sending their resume. Have them send to a certain um, email address with a certain, ask them why they think they'd be good for this position or tell them to have them do something, have them write something, have them go to your website and then tell you why they are interested in dental, have them do something. Because what you're doing right there is you're eliminating the people who are just going, dear hiring manager, dear hiring manager, dear, and you're getting all of the, you know, they're applying to you and 27 jobs. You're eliminating that. And then you're actually bringing the cream of the crop to the top of saying these people actually read what they're supposed to do, right? They're, they're supposed to do this thing or whatever it is you're asking. And I that I say when we were getting flooded with resumes, that's how you can get the people who actually follow through. And those are the people we want to hire. In this case, those that are just applying to try to keep unemployment they're not necessarily, you know, going to do that. So you're weeding out some of the ones that they're not going to go the extra step or you can identify that. So that would definitely. So what's your favorite task to have them do? So let's say they're applying for a front desk or they're applying for a, kid, a clinical. What would be one of your favorite tasks? Well, one of the things I would say is we, we request that you look at our, res, our, our website and then in your cover letter, tell us why you think you'd be interested in our position or tell us something about our office that you're interested in. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It just, or another, if you want to do, call, call the office, call this number to get the email of where to submit your resume. Or it could be a simple little thing, but the idea is, did they read it? Because so many times I talk to dentists who are complaining about their employees who can't follow directions on what they're supposed to do. And I'm like, they, that was, you could have caught that in the interview, you yep. know, if they All can't. Right. So that's the kind of thing that we're trying to do with that. That's a great one. So yeah. let, let's backpedal even to the ads. You know, we see ads all the time. We need someone who is able to multitask, handle high pace, handle this, handle this, handle this. And in my opinion, if I'm an employee, I'm looking at that thinking, damn, they need a schizophrenic octopus to handle that front desk, you know? The, the staff run from that. Right. So I'm a big believer of writing out a really good ad, let the, the team know or the prospective team member know what it is that you're looking for. What And I like to even get the team that are on my team to put – what are the things that you like about working with our office incorporate into the ads? But what do you find as being kind of a two part question? What do you find as being important in an ad? And then the second part is where are some of the ad sources to place to find right. a dental post, et cetera? So 
Yeah. So the first thing is, is there's two, there's two words here that we have to define or describe here. One's a job ad and one's a job description. So a job description is got to be able to multitask, needs to know soft computers, needs to be comfortable on the phones. That's a job description. A job advertisement is it's meant to attract. The word advertise is to, the idea behind it is to attract. So when you put a job ad together that really is a job description, it's a checklist, it's these are the things you have to do, you're gonna only attract that kind of a person who's like a check off the box kind of person. And if you're looking for a rock star, you know, key, you know, great employee, I'm not saying that that person's not a rock star, great, get, great employee, but a real great employee is gonna come, they're going to come to you because of your purpose, your why, your energy, why your office rocks, like what the cool thing is about your office. So build in, and I agree with you, Kelly, build into your job um, advertisement, bigger, bigger things. People want a purpose. People want a why. Real good employees don't go to work to multitask. Real good employees go to work to make a difference in patients' lives, to give back to the community, to have fun at work, whatever it is your office has. You want to put that into the advertisement because we're looking to attract people. And I 100% think that before you even write the job ad, first, you need a good job description so you know what you're looking for. Because a lot of times we tend to have an idea of what we're looking for. And then when we're desperate, we take a square, square peg and put it into a round hole because we forgot to like remember what the actual des description is. And then the next thing I'd say is go to your team, talk to your team, not only about why do they love your practice? Why do they love being there? Like what's unique about you guys, but also what would they like to see in the next team member? I mean, they're the ones who have to work with this employee. Do they want somebody who's detail oriented because maybe they feel like they're not that? Do they want somebody who's chipper and friendly because they want to put them on the phones and they want to work on insurance? Like go to your team to get their buy-in because they'll help you develop the great job description and the great advertisement. And then there's no, uh-oh, the doctor's interviewing. It's how can we help? How can we be involved to bring in our next uh, great team member? Okay. So I want to share here real quick one of the uh, little things that I'm seeing out there. There was a company in northern Michigan. They had a job fair, 60 businesses. Only four people showed up for the job. McDonald's, this was here in North Carolina the other day, $400 signing bonus. This is McDonald's, mind you. And then a dental assistant, same thing, show up, $500 hiring bonus. So I'm a big believer that when it comes to running an ad, if you will, nowadays, you know, you don't want to come across like you're needy or desperate. Yes, we have turnover, but I really believe like looking to recruit the best. So for example, when Tom Brady, who was far from being done, was still able to play football, somebody paid him top dollar to come back and then renewed him. I like to tell my doctors to think of recruiting, not just hiring. Key words like willing to pay top dollar for your experience, looking for the best, those types of things. And I'm all for a signing bonus. Know your numbers, what, what that really means. What is a you know, $400 signing bonus mean or a $500 signing bonus. What are your thoughts on that type of thing in an ad? Um, I, so you and I, we were kind of talking about this a little bit ahead of time. I, I do think that for the right people, I mean, you should pay your team well. Don't, don't get me wrong. Your team should feel valued and you should pay them well. I am hesitant. I know we're in a competitive market, so I'm not against it, right? But I would be hesitant for somebody coming in specifically because of the hiring bonus or because of the pay top dollar. I'm not saying that you shouldn't and you can't. I'm just saying that would be one of my things that would be, I'd want to know really what, for sure why this person's looking because is it really because of the top dollar or the hiring bonus? Now, all that being said, Kelly, I'm going to full circle back to the fact that I would say right now, if you're looking for a key player, they're probably not on the job market. They're probably not unemployed. And I think we should take a step back to go, the ads are great and we should run the ads. You should never stop advertising, but we should get the word out across the industry. Your team should be looking. We should be looking in other industries because if you're looking for a superstar hygienist, they're probably not looking through the ads they're probably maybe working somewhere else part-time, maybe looking. So we need to realize that 
the ads are just one avenue of trying to find the next good candidate. Absolutely. And that's where I'm about recruiting because I know the people aren't going to be looking per se, but when someone sees, oh, willing to pay for my experience, my skill set, you know, I'm willing, I'm not looking for someone because I've always been taught minimum wage means you get minimum effort, right? right. And yeah. you're going to get what you pay for. You know, if I could steal Janelle from you and even yeah. thought I could get her, I would make her an offer. I love her. <laughs> Don't you, you know, dare. <laughs> I won't, I won't even think about it. But your, your team is awesome. But, you know, you're, you're willing to pay and keep those great, great employees. You know, Anna is my right hand. I couldn't afford her if I wasn't married to her. Right, uh, right. You've got, but you've got to be willing to pay for those people to try and attract because it's two part. But then I'm a big believer of setting up performance goals. You know, if you mm -hmm. want top dollar, I need you to do A, B, C, D, and E. Not average, but way above average. Right. right? You know, right. And the difference between amateur and professional is a professional gets paid for their numbers to increase. So right. you think of Tom Brady, he's got touchdowns and yardage and, you know, right. all those types of things compared to some of the other quarterbacks. The least in the league makes, you know, Cam Newton, I think, made a million bucks last year. and He was overpaid. And then you got Tom Brady, who's making 15, 20 million, you know, and their, their numbers are great. So I agree with you. Yeah. A lot of times the people looking for a job aren't even the people you want because their job right. is right right and that's the thing i think this last year especially in our industry is kind of become the great equalizer for me and what i mean by that is i watched this last year it got to the point where i just had to turn it off because i i heard so many team members who were saying they didn't even hear from their dentist when we were shut down it was months and they hadn't heard from their dentist and i thought how sad is that as a, as a leader? Like you were not communicating with nobody here, but you were not communicating with your team. But on the flip side, I saw dental assistants and, and front office team members saying, oh, I'm not going back. I make more on unemployment. Well, how sad is that? So yeah. these people out there right now who aren't showing up to your interviews, it, you should almost thank them. Okay. Well, these, yeah. and they're, what's that? they're, they're, they have to show that they're trying right. to stay on unemployment yep. and that can be hurting our business as well. Yeah. You know, so I know you're out there traveling like I am and Marriott did a study. They can't get people to come back into key positions because Marriott has found that the average employee on unemployment is making $16 an hour mm -hmm. and they were only making 17 while working. Mm -hmm. So for a dollar less, they're staying home. That's why Marriott's still not cleaning my room. Thank you for yeah. telling me, Kelly. <laughs> well, it, they, you know, I stay at a lot and I've got friends high up that food chain and uh, they can't get uh, W, uh, what, what's the uh, foreign uh, work visas. They can't get those visas granted. They can't uh -huh. bring in enough staff. So even though you and I want to stay at the hotel, they don't have the staff to service the hotel. Yeah, so yeah. That's a way of cutting costs. So, so that's where for me, it's like the thing that it's going to attract, yes, top dollar. And I don't agree with that. You should pay for the, for the value of the employee. And if they're a rock star, they should get paid. Um, what I think is going to attract people to your office, to your business is your culture, your leadership, how, because if you go to your team members and you're like, what is it that you love to work here? Why do you love working here? Why would people want to work for us? And they say, because you pay me really well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's nice, but what else, right? And it's that part, it, that's almost like a, the basis of what you need, but it's the, you know, we have, we have a lot of teamwork here. There's no gossip. We get along really well. We help each other out. We work to get out at, on time. We get back to the community. That's the kind of stuff. So, so the good employees, the good hygienists, the good assistants who are over somewhere else went back to work because they are a rock star. They're not going to leave their businesses high and dry. But those are the ones who may not be happy with that leadership. And they would love the opportunity to come over to you, but they've got to hear about it. They've got to be recruited. They've got to be attracted. Your team needs to be talking about it. You need to be talking to your reps about it. You need to be talking about it in study clubs, whatever, because we want to get those people over. So when this all turns around and these people on unemployment now need jobs, they can go work for the other offices that, that are not so amazing and you've got the amazing rock stars. So where, what are your top five sources to get the word out? You know, there's, there's Dental Post, there's, you know, 
the online sites. But, you know, what are your top five uh, normal and then maybe creative ways to get the word out? Right. And I, I found some of the best front desk employees from banks, from Starbucks, uh, even the front desk at hotels in certain cities we're in because they've got the natural uh, yep. customer service training multitask aspect, right? Yep. Some yep. of the best waiters and waitresses make the best dental assistants if you're willing to train them because they can juggle so many things and pay attention. But where where are you finding people getting the best response to ads, the best sources, if you will? That's funny. That's the reason I started Front Office Rocks right there because I, I used to say, go find a bank teller or a hostess or whatever. And they'd say, great, Laura, but how can I train them? Well, so that's why I started Front Office Rocks. Go get somebody out of dental and bring them in. Sure. Um, so Dental Post is great. I know there's other dental sites. Here's my thing about the actual um, posting. It depends on your area and it depends on the position. So I'm okay with like Craigslist for yeah. receptionist in front office. I'm okay with that. Might be okay with Craigslist for dental assistant. I'm not going to get an associate dentist off Craigslist. I think that I don't know that I want somebody, a dentist on Craigslist, but I'd find a hygienist on dental post, you know? So it depends on, and each area is different. Like Craigslist is big here. Dental Post in California is not big. I've tried to blow it up. I love Dental Post. They're not really big in San Diego, but they're huge in Florida. And right. so if I'm in Florida, I'm going there. There's a lot of new um, temp agencies out there now um, that cloud, cloud Dentistry, I think is one that I know of that they're big in Houston and I can get temps in that way that I can hire if I like them. So look at all of the avenues, but I don't, I can't say that there's one or two or five that, cause it really depends on your area and um, the position for the some dental. Of the, some of the Facebook groups like Dental Peaks and things like that sometimes are looking, but one of the tricks I've learned, Laura, is let's say I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina here. I'll type in Charlotte, North Carolina dental assistant or front desk, and I'll see all the places that they're listed and then put my ads out there that way as well. Right. Actually, funny story. So my daughter is 21 now, but when she graduated high school, she was moving. Was 21, you're only 30. I know, right? I had her young, exactly. She was graduating high school and she was going off and she got married and is in college. And I said, you know, before you leave, her dad's a dentist. I said, you should be get it, become a dental assistant and work in your dad's office because that's always a great fallback career, no matter where you end up, because she's married to a Coast Guard guy, no matter where you end up, you should fall back, have that as a fallback. So she did it. She got it her assisting. She went in and got the experience and she hated it. She literally hated, it. of course, the daughter of a dentist. She's like, I'm not working in a dental office, but she has the experience. It's like way down on her resume. She's now a, a, a preschool teacher. She's so way down on her resume. She's getting calls. She lives in DC now. She's getting calls every day. People looking for assistance. They're looking for dental assistance. Are you? And she's like, mom, I never want to work in a dental office again. And I'm like, it's hard out there. Everyone's trying to find assistance right now. So sure. we're all competing for the same, you know? Right. Um, so you got to get creative. The other thing about job ads I'll say is, you can't post it once and then go, well, I got no ads. I got no resumes. Well, you got to keep posting. You got to keep adding. You got to keep changing. You want to keep it on the top of the search. If you have to put some money behind it to put it up there, whatever you need to do, because it's going to get buried fast and you can't post it once and just hope because you want, it's not when you post it that matters. It's when the person you're looking for reads it that matters. So you want to make sure you're at the beginning or at the top. And you definitely want to show your your flavor. You know, at Christmas, right after the first year, a lot of people tend to jump jobs. We've run ads like, hey, dear Santa, we didn't get what we were looking for. We're looking for a jolly elf you know, or uh, one of my doctors, real good looking guy, but they ran an ad. Um, Dr. Dave, short, fat, and bald. Every love, one loves working for Dr. Dave. Here's five reasons why. And people see that sense of humor and they want to come there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Kind of going back, Laura, give me, give me the mile high five quick steps of what you would do in the interview process. So you run the ad. Now you've got some people coming. Take her from there. Give me the five steps that everybody should do, if you will, if, if five. Yeah, yeah, sure. So first of all, you already started with it, but I'm going to reiterate, you can't procrastinate. So you've got to set up a system that you're looking at resumes every day because good candidates are not available very long. So um, in my book, I outline, I mean, it's not rocket science, but I call it the red, yellow, green. So if they're red, just there we go. Thank you. Hiring without hesitation. If they're red, just move them to the side. 
If they're green, you want to move on them right now. You want to call them, just like you said, call them right now and schedule your Zoom interview, schedule something with them because you want to get to them before they get another job. And if they're yellow, you can send them into a pile. I talk about in the book, more than likely the maybe pile is probably a no pile, but you're just afraid to put them in the no because you're desperate. So that's fine. Put them in the maybe pile, the yellow pile and, and move on the green. So the first thing is, is don't wait too long. I know so many dentists who have a stack of resumes or they're all in your inbox and it's Friday and you haven't gotten to them yet. Well, by Friday, if the resume came out on Monday, they may already have another job. So you got to move fast. Then the second thing I would do is make sure you do the phone interview or a Zoom interview, however you want to do it. I like phone interviews first. And my reason for that is they're very short, less commitment, less like set up your computer and all of that kind of stuff. So less commitment on both parts. Um, I love to hear how the person sounds on the phone because more than likely they're going to talk to your patients on the phone. And I feel it's an unbiased way for me to truly judge them. I don't know what they look like. I don't know what their backgrounds. I don't know how they're dressed. So the voice versus American Idol. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So the set. So, and, and when, what I want to say is when you're doing this, I'm a great multitasker, right? I can, I can write and I can do this and I can do that. But if you're multitasking, you're not giving anything a hundred percent. 100% of your attention. When you're doing these things, you need to give it 100% of your attention. So get rid of the outside, go sit somewhere quiet, get away from the production of the office and actually pay attention to that phone call. There are so many red flags that you can tell on a phone call that we miss because we're doing 16 other things. The person swore, the person answered the phone at their job where they're currently working, inappropriate. The person, you know what I mean? Like there's so many things we miss. So it'd be the phone interview. Then if you love them, bring them into the face-to-face -face interview. My first thing with the face-to-face -face interview is pay attention at the beginning. Did they show up on time? How are they dressed? How did they greet the receptionist when they came in? How do they, when they're hanging out in the reception area, what are they doing? Are they, do they have kind of the RBF face? Are they, you know, like, because the yeah, non-verbals, no, right? Because this- Yeah, very true. This is who your patients are going to see when they come in. How, how do they treat, how they treat you is different than how they treat the receptionist. Pay attention. It's kind of like, you know, how, how you get treated in, in a, a, you know, a, with a waiter or whatever. So pay attention to that. Then the next part is in the actual interview, in the first half, you should do very little talking. In the first half, and I, and I outlined this in the book, in the first half, you should listen. You should ask questions and listen. The first half, a lot of times we go into interviews to sell them on how great we are, to sell them on the job, to sell them on desperate, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we're not actually, I don't know that I want them and I don't want to waste my time. And if I'm doing all the talk and I'm not doing any listening. So I, I want to ask questions, open-ended questions to get them to talk. I don't even really care what they're telling me about the experience at this point. I really want to just listen to them, watch their nonverbals, hear their attitude. You know, then if I, if my gut instinct, my, if I'm like, okay, this is a good candidate, this is some, somebody I could see working here, then you can jump into the questions more. Then you can start digging into their experience. Then you can start selling them on your position, but don't do that at the beginning. Then the next part of that thing I would say, I guess for you, Kelly, is that we don't have a lot of time. So don't feel that every interview has to be an hour long. <laughs> If they're not a fit, they're not a fit. Be polite. They came in, ask them some questions, tell them an abridged version of your job, and then let them go. You don't have to wow it because you're going to get burnt out on hiring, and then you're not going to want to do this process if you're wasting a lot of time doing it with not good candidates. So make sure that you, you know, you're you're not wasting your time in the interviews. And then at the end, if if they're a fit, know what you're going to, or if you feel good about them, know what your next steps are going to be. You know, are you going to want a second interview? Are you, you know, are you going to do personality tests? Are you, of course, do um, references? Um, do you do background checks? Like, what is it you do? You want them to do a working interview? Whatever it is, don't send them away and then not follow up with them for two or three days because somebody else is going to snatch them up. So know exactly what you want to do to keep your, know your hiring process. Know what it is you're doing to get them through the process quickly. And then my final step, I don't know if that's five or six or whatever, is when you, <laughs> when you hire somebody, it's not over when they say yes. That first week and month is key to 
you still might've hired the wrong person. I mean, how many times did you go on a second date with somebody and then you went, ooh, I was wrong on that, right? Just because that you hired him doesn't mean that they're a keeper. So don't um, discount the importance of training and onboarding them if you want to make sure you've got the right person and you want somebody that's going to stay long-term. So all my dates were wrong except my wife. That's why exactly. she's my wife, right? It's always the last one. The <laughs> last the last one. At least it's supposed to be. So mm -hmm. one of the things I love talking about you, Laura, is you bring a million things into my head. Uh, it, we just could, I know we could go all night, but one of the other things I was thinking about with ads, I like to make sure the doctor's name is in the ad. Um, nobody likes to apply to a blind ad, you know, hiring a dental assistant and some obscure email box, right? That, that's hey. a big one. The other in the interviewing questions, really recommend that the doctor have, I do 20 questions, the same 20. I do 10 verbal questions that we have them answer out loud. You know, what's the biggest asset of our business? Is it more important to motivate the patient or the team and why the doctor or the team and why questions along those lines, we have 10. And then we have 10 written questions. So I would say, Laura, I'm going to ask 10 questions of you. I'm going to give you one minute to write your answer. Here's paper. Do you have a pen? I'm even looking for preparedness, right? right. Who goes to an interview without a resume or a pen? So, or, so I do that and we go through that process. So along with what you're saying, I'm a big believer of having prepared questions, mm -hmm. not just, hey, come on back to my office, let's sit down and chat. And I ask you a series of questions that go more in depth. But when I interview Aaron, I, I don't ask those same questions. So I don't really have that same comparison. So right. there's a, a couple things I'm a big fan of. I'm so going to steal, I, steal that. I'll quote you to that. But I, I never thought about the writing the questions, writing your answer. I mean, we did I'll it even, in group interviews. Yeah. We'd have them write in group interviews, but that's a great idea. Yeah, I, I'll send you all of them, but we use it. And I was just going to go down that road. Group interviews are really great for positions when you get multiple applicants and it's abundance. However, last six months, we're lucky to get two or three that were worth interviewing. So we could do, talk about group interviews at another time or whatever, but again, the prepared questions on your behalf, don't look like you're just doing something haphazard. No one wants to feel like they're an afterthought, you know, when they're going in for a job. And the other that you mentioned about the talking, I've always learned 70, 30. I talk 30% of the time, you talk 70 if I'm looking to hire you. Because I'm going to ask the questions and I want to see what you have to offer. And then I'm going to turn it to you and say, what questions do you have of me? I want to see if you're even prepared. Right. You know, my son, Logan, is graduating from Penn State um, this summer with a degree in finance. And he's starting to go through his first series of serious interviews. And we sit down and we practice a little bit. We discuss it. And he writes his questions. He's like, how should I handle this? And you know, at this interview, they talked about that. So he's trying to get prepared for each interview to be better than the next because he's not going to marry the first company that offers him right. a job, which he had a job offer in San Antonio and he probably is not going to take. And he's like, dad, here's what I'm going to do. He said, I'm not going to take a job with what they offered, but I'm going to come back with a bigger number. And if they can give me that number, mm -hmm. I'm going to really think about it. I was like, that's great because you got to try some different things out in that regards. Right. So, right. so, you know, we talked a little bit about wages, you know, the, the standard out there has always been somewhere between 16 and 24% of your collections is kind of your salary wage for staffing. COVID has caused us to sometimes have to add extra staff, which bumped the wages up a little bit. But one of the things that I'm a big fan of, and I'd like to get your opinion, I like to back into what are we collecting what does this person wage mean? You know, if they're $25, our salary's at 20%, what would it mean if I paid $27 or $28 an hour? You know, I'm finding that you do have to pay a little bit more right now than in the past. And I know we're not all about paying just to pay, but I'm willing to pay for a first round draft pick mm -hmm. versus somebody who's never played the game before. Mm -hmm. So any thoughts on that? I know it's kind of repetitive. Yeah, I mean, so the reason I, I get hesitant, Kelly, because you and I are on the same page. And if I was in maybe a different industry, I'd probably be more towards like pay top dollar to get good candidates. The reason I hesitate is I've talked to so many dentists who think 
good candidate means 10 years of Dentrix experience yeah. or good candidate means they were an assistant for 15 years. And you said it before that we started this, I think that's 15 years of bad habits. So yep. that's my only hesitation with, I don't have a tried and true um, experience with this person yet. And so just because they come and they were an assistant for 15 years and they did Dentrix for 10 years, I just, I'm a little, I just get, cause I hear doctors say, I'm willing to pay. They're going to, they're, you know, they're making me, they're giving me their rate and it's double what I was planning, but I'm willing to pay their rock star. And I'm like, but are they a rock star or do they just have a lot of yeah. you know, experience and, in dental? And, and with that, and I think, I think you and I are talking the same language is that if I'm going to hire you at top dollar, I'm making it really clear what we expect of you, right? And then I'm going to follow through at one week, three weeks, six weeks, and make sure we're on that. Another thing that I like to do, and this kind of leads us into our next topic of retention, um, you know, I believe in making sure that after certain time frames, you know, uh, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, one week, two week, three week, whatever you feel, these are the things that you should be learning or have learned in our office, how to answer the phone you know, how to, you know, handle cancellations, no show scripting, different things. You know, I had a gal come to me one time says, Kelly, you know, I've known you a while. I really like you. I think you do great things with our team, but can you help me get a raise with the doctor? I'm worth more. And I said to her, well, I'd be glad to, I think you're a rock star, but first tell me why you deserve a raise. And this is where the answer blew me away. She said, well, I'm always on time. I'm always friendly and polite. And I always try to help my teammates. And I kind of scratched my head and I went, that's your job. <laughs> I thought he already paid you for that. I didn't know each one of those things cost extra. Yeah. You know? And yeah. so we sat down and I looked at, and you know, I use dental Intel a lot, but we looked at certain metrics in dental Intel that she had an effect on. And I showed her where she was and where she's at. And she hadn't made that great of progress, although she was definitely doing a great job. So I challenged her to get her numbers up and come back to me in 30 or 60 days. And she just smoked those numbers. That's and awesome. I said, now I can go to the doctor and say, if you maintain these numbers, then I can help you out. So, so and before, because I know you're going into retention. So I want to go there with you. But there's two things that you brought up that I want to kind of make sure that I don't miss at this point. So when it comes to paying for a rock star, right? Paying top dollar for a rock star and even finding a rock star for that matter. I also suggest that you think out of the box a little bit. And one of my out of the boxes is your team might be the rock stars you need a little, maybe there's a little bonus game you can play in with your team. Maybe we can get a little bit more efficient. Maybe we can all fill the gaps a little bit more. Maybe we can have some people jump in and then they can get a little bit more while we're looking or while we're onboarding or while we're trying to find that new employee. I have seen so many times when I have had to let an employee go that I held on to way too long when that employee left. And I found out after the fact that everybody was like, thank you. Finally, my team stepped up and, and filled the, yeah. filled the void. So don't just throw the top dollar idea at the rock stars. Also look at your team. My second thing is when you're desperate, you're going to seem desperate. So find other, it's not going to get better fast. I don't think. So also look at things like outsourcing, look at things for like, I mean, training your team better using like dental Intel. So they know their numbers and what's the, what do we care about? Like, maybe we're not spending a ton of time doing the not so important stuff so we can focus on the important stuff. Um, we know we're coming through a pendulum swing, but where can you outsource? Like, can you take some stuff and outsource it for insurance? Can you get help on the phones? There are companies now that can pick up the slack until we get through this hiring issue, I think. So just make sure you're being creative around what you're doing in your office. Yeah, we've had a couple offices that had a three person front desk or a three dental assistants and somebody left and we took their wage and went to the other team and said, hey, can we take a piece of her wage and throw it into you if you can keep up customer service expectation systems? Yeah. And man, did they rise to the occasion for a couple extra dollars. Yeah. You know, they, they've really done that. And that's a, that's a great thing. Yep. So let's talk a couple of things about what we can do to retain staff. So how important to you, and I'm just looking at my notes, uh, how often do you like to do reviews? What do you think should happen? Because you mentioned earlier about the lack of communication and reviews. I'm not a fan of waiting till year end reviews. I like three, six, nine, and 12. I don't want to wait. I'm also a big fan of the one minute manager. It's old school, 
but you shouldn't let things go long before I tell you three months ago, you pissed me off because of X, Y, or Z. Yeah. I think you need to know that when it's happened, you know, so talk to me about your philosophy on reviews and communication. Well, I'm, you know, reviews, it's so funny because whenever we say the word reviews, it automatically means I'm getting a raise or there's this thing about compensation. And so that's why I don't like, yeah, I don't like it annually either because it, I, I don't want to be able to have to sit down with you and always wonder if I'm getting a raise or, or whatever, right? Can I jump in? I believe that's one of the things too to lay out when you're offering a person a position. We're going to have a review of performance at three, six, nine, and 12 but none of them are tied to money. They're about expectations. Right, right. And money could come at any time. Right, yeah. Um, I think that dentists think they communicate, well, some dentists think they communicate well, other dentists know that they don't communicate well and that's okay, but whatever your level is, you probably need to communicate twice as much. Like it, it's, I just know it gets busy and it's the end of the week and this and that. So whatever you're doing, double it because your team needs to hear from you. Your team needs to have, they need to know regularly. I think the next thing is, is regular communication. And so I actually, not to like plug this or whatever, but I just finished the Dave Ramsey Entre Leadership Conference. I think every dentist should go to this conference. It's about being a better leader as an entrepreneur. And I actually met one of our dentists there. She's a, a client of Front Office Rocks and we were talking about it and she's been before and this is her second time. And one of the things we learned there is your direct reports, one of the speakers, I think maybe Pat Lencioni or somebody was talking about, one of you, or your direct report should get 15 minutes a week with you. 15, and she's like, how am I going to do this 15 minutes a week? And the first of all is you have to schedule it. You have to make sure you schedule it. And then you have to have an agenda. And when you're meeting regularly with your employees, it, it's not such a, oh my gosh, it's a review. I got to get all my notes together. I got to get all my things together. It's a regular communication. Here's where you're doing great. Here's where you can improve. Here's what we're going to work on next week. And if you have too many employees and you can't do that, then it's time to figure out who can because your team, you know, they come to work every day, not, yes, they have to make the money, but they come for the bigger game. They come for the purpose. They come for why are we doing this? And they need to know how they're doing. I have a story, Kelly, that I have, um, I had three doctors in my office and they all worked in the doctor's office. Like they had three computers next to each other and they loved it because they could share, you know, talk about cases and stuff. But I would walk in there and I'd hear them complaining about the dental assistants. She messed up again. She didn't get me this. She didn't get me that. And they're talking amongst themselves. And I'd say, well, did you tell her? No, no, no. no. <laughs> so I'm like, well, how is she supposed to know? You, right. if you guys are talking to each other, but you're not telling, well, that's, that's uncomfortable. That's awkward. That's difficult. That's, and I, and I actually have a video on Front Office Rocks where I show the top 20 things that doctors get annoyed by dental assistants because I just took their list and I was like, well, I'll make a video out of it. But you've got to communicate with them. They're not going to improve. They're not, they're not doing it despite you. They just don't know and they need feedback. So I think, I mean, if you can do it weekly, do it yeah. weekly, but some sort of a regular regimen. Courageous conversations is what it's all about, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so on that, you know, so many doctors think, if I talk to the person about performance, they're going to expect money. And there's, there's a little truth. If I tell you you're doing a great job all the time, that may, that may happen. But you got to lay it out in the beginning. Or even if you've been in practice with your team for five years, you need to come to them and say, today's a new day, Laura. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to have these meetings, you know, weekly, monthly, whatever they may be. And here's the purpose of that meeting. So when we get time to do a, what we'll call a formal review, then we can talk about, you know, where you weigh in on that. Right. So, you know, part of one of the things we want to talk today about is, is how do we keep long-term employees? And one of the things that I like to do, you know, we, we do a little bit of a share the profit, the better we do, the better you do. A lot of teams call it a bonus. Okay. But I like to make sure they understand the numbers so they know the cost of a cancellation and no show. But a couple of things that, you know, in terms of retention, people think that staff leave because of money. When I find more staff leave because of breakdown of communication with the doctor, they don't know what to expect. They don't know what's going on. They're not getting feedback. The doctor's quiet. Last one in, first one out, you know, and they don't set the example of the attitude, right? Any thoughts or feedback on that? 
Yeah, no, I think, I don't think, um, and I don't know who's the quote, this is someone's quote, but I don't think people lead bad jobs, they lead bad bosses. Um, when you open your practice and you put your name on the wall, you became an owner, you became a, a manager, you became a leader. So improving in your leadership and communication um, is going to help your long-term employees. I also think culture is a big thing. There's a book called Culture Trumps Everything that I think you should read because I, the idea is I can bring a rock star employee into my environment. And if my culture sucks, I'm going to kill that rock star employee. Um, but I can bring an average employee into a culture that's amazing and I can turn them into a rock star. So when we're looking for people right now, we also have to look at our culture because you might get somebody in there that was a rock star, squash them, and then they're going to go work somewhere else, you know? Right. Um, so really paying attention to your culture, your communication, your leadership. And then the biggest thing, Kelly, and have fun. We spend more time with our dental families than we do our own families. I don't care if it means you're going to have, we stopped the day in the middle of the day after the schedule fell apart and we had paper airplane competition just to get people to lighten up and have some fun. And we get so darn serious over numbers and production and schedule and People don't, I mean, those, if they're on your team, they're out looking for a better culture and we don't want that. So make sure you're doing everything you can to just, you know, we have to be serious and get the job done, but we can do it in a way that it's not torturous, you know? So try to have some fun. I had a team I told one time, they asked me how I felt they were doing. And I said, you guys are just too intense all the time. And if you're like this with your patients, I wouldn't want to be here because it's really intense. So about a month goes by, I show back up at their office. I'm walking down. I hear no one. I see no one. I'm like, I know they're here, but I don't see. I get to the end of the hall. And they all jumped out with super soakers and just drowned. Me. Uh -huh. like, Are you having fun now, Kelly? I was like, oh boy. You so, know, what's funny, Kelly, is it's like, it's kind of, and I've never thought about this, but you just, the way you just said that, you know, we are on our best behavior when guests come to our house, you know, and we act like we're a happy family and on social media, we're a happy family and stuff. We're the same with our patients. Like we put on our best performance for our patients. And I know dentists, like it's a lot of work to do their best performance for your patients and then your team, but they deserve it. And we, maybe we're not going to be on, on point all the time, but you got to find ways to, I mean, I'll, I mean, I teach this stuff and I have in my phone once a month, a reminder to thank my team members individually for something they've done this month. I put it in my phone as a reminder because we get busy and all of a sudden I'm like, gosh, I haven't recognized that person. It doesn't take a lot to say, thank you for today. I saw you do that one thing or, you know, good job with that. Yeah. D Disney's philosophy too, because your team need a place to vent is what they call on stage, off stage, right? So whenever you're in earshot or a patient can see you, we're on stage, but shut the door, get in the break room, step outside, scream, cuss, holler, whatever you have to do, come back and, and be on stage. But, you know, in my early career, I worked for Marriott, which was one of the best training companies in the country. Uh, Mr. Marriott actually taught us a little thing. He, he's like, I want you to take 10 dimes and put them in your left pocket. And they're going to jingle when you walk. Your job is every time you compliment an employee, take one dime out of the left and put it on the right. And when every when all your dimes are in your right pocket, then you can take them out and start over tomorrow. And the uh -huh. idea he was trying to teach us was catch people in the act of doing you know, the right thing on a regular yeah. basis. So right. what yeah. are some of the some of the tips or or tricks that you've learned along the ways? You know, I know like like me, you're involved with hundreds and hundreds of offices to keep people around. So a couple of quick ones I have is like I like to do a a stocked break room for the team. I find out what everybody on the team's favorite beverage, favorite snack, and favorite thing we can pop in the microwave because they have to work through lunch sometimes. Um, I like to, on a long, rough week, and we know our schedule, we'll have pizzas delivered Thursday at 5 o'clock, one for everybody to take home to their family. Little things along that line, you know, giving people the choice of their birthday off with pay or to work the day and get double time or, or just to have the day off with pay. Little things like that. What are some of the things that you found or that you've heard that maybe we haven't that make people feel appreciated above and beyond? You know, we've done things like bringing a masseuse in and everybody gets, one, you know, one of those chairs and they get 10 minutes or 15 minutes and things okay. like that. Uh, you know, what I actually had a sheet at one point. I wish I knew where it was. But I asked the staff, what are 10 ways I can show you appreciation? 
that are your language. Cause like flowers are not my wife, unless it's from my son. Yeah. For me, she wants, she wants time. She wants dinner. She wants conversation, which I love to do, but I need to know what makes, you know, my team happy and no, no two people are alike. Well, and that's what I was going to say. I see it all the time on social media. What should I do for a bonus? What should I do for my team? What should I, and my number one answer to this is always ask your team, like go to your team and everybody's different. Maybe I have one team member. She loves to get recognized in front of the rest of the team. So if I can shout out a good thing to her in front of the rest of the, about her in front of the team, that's what fires her up. Somebody else, she's a single mom and like a gift card to go get Starbucks is all she needs or, or, or team, you know, like you said, I think that pizza idea is amazing. So find out from your team and it's not always about money. We did the smallest thing. We called it the high five game. And we got, I don't know, I got a hundred and some dollars of, high, of $5 bills. And anytime any of the doctors saw something good going up, they'd go and give them a high five and they got a $5 bill. Yep. Some walked home with $5, some walked home with 15, but I started seeing other people trying to do things uh, over and above because they, it wasn't the money. It was the, it was the recognition from the dentist. So get, it doesn't have to be about bonus. It doesn't have to be, it, can, it needs to be about games. And that's the other thing is you mentioned bonus and I think bonus is great. I think a bonus should be around a, um, a goal. Oh, it I should agree. be, right? Yeah. You don't want to, one of the mistakes I see, and I don't mean to interrupt, uh -huh. uh, when you give a bonus, most teams don't know why or what they did to get the bonus. So I call it share of the profit. Here's what we have to do. Here's our salary uh, numbers. Here's our collection numbers. Here's our goals. And we, we tie that together. So for example, let's say we're gonna pay 20% of collections to the team. Well, if we have a cancellation for a profi at 200 bucks, that's $40 I can't pay you. Or if we don't, we let that hour go blank, right? Those kind of things. So then the team have incentive because I don't think there's anybody who doesn't wanna make more money. Right, 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 right. Um, on that, on that level too, and I, again, this is just where I go down these rabbit holes I warned you about. Mm -hmm. um, I like to do a thing called a retro raise. I don't know if you've heard of this, but I look at what did you do? You know, you come to me and say, Doc, I think I need a little more money. Okay, why? And we look at your performance. And for the last three months, you've been crushing it. So I'm going to say, you know what, Laura, you're right. In the last three months, you worked 180 hours. I'm going to give you $180, which is the equivalent of dollar an hour, let's talk in another three months. Because if I give you that raise, you're locked into it, your performance goes down, right. I'm kind of screwed. Love so that. I call it a retro raise for what you've done. And then like you said, the high five, I'd like to tell my doctors, catch somebody in the act of doing something and at the morning huddle, give them that $10 Starbucks card or whatever it may be in front of them. And you, you know, right. raise in public, critique in private. That's right. what sometimes doctors don't listen to either. So all, so, all yeah, one of the, and I, I think that's all amazing. The bonus thing, I had a backfire for us in the bonus. And this is where I learned our lesson hard. We had a bonus and it was a profit share and all of that. And we gave, you know, it's hard on the doctors to give that out. Even though we made the money, it's like, here's your checks, yeah. here's your checks, right? And I was married to the dentist at the time and we were on our way to family vacation and he got a phone call from our dental assistant and he thought she was calling to thank him or something. And he, she called and she said, um, something's wrong with my check. And he's like, what do you mean? And she said, well, I didn't get what I was supposed to get. And he's like, no, it's based off of this, this and this, and that's what you're supposed to get. Well, I already spent this money on Christmas and that burned me because a bonus is a bonus. It's not what we pay to do your job. So what I like to do is I think I like to mix it up. So maybe you do a bonus for three months. Maybe you do a bonus for a month. Maybe you do different, but then also maybe you play a game. Maybe it's not about production. Maybe this month it's about getting reviews or maybe next month it's yeah. about whatever. Yeah, new page. Because, yeah, because I think we get tired of talking about the same thing, looking at the same thing. And it gets, it's kind of like working out. Like after you've been doing the same thing for a while, your body just gets like used to it. Yep. So you got to mix it up and find something fun. So I like to maybe this month we're working on reviews. Next month we're going to work on whatever it is, right? Reactivation. We're going to do a quarter bonus and on the quarter bonus. So then that way it's fresh and it's new and people are talking about it. And 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 because that's the point is if they're not excited by it, why do it? Just pay them to do their job. Yeah.
I've had it blow up too because, you know, and again, it's all in communication and, and setting the expectation, but a staff all of a sudden has, you know, they bonus two, three months in a row. You got to let them know, hey, don't go buying a car based on this additional income because you hit a month like August when there's an extra payroll and they think they're going to bonus and then it throws off the calculation, you know, that can get frustrating. And I've also had teams come to the doctor and say, you know, we're tired of this bonus. Can't we just get a raise? And the doctor caves, gives a raise, then their salaries are out of line. So it can go all different directions. But I think what both you and I are saying is that there is no one way to motivate your team, but doctors, you've got to step up and give your team something to get excited about. Because, you know, every one of my doctors that are listening today will hear, I, I compare two Disney characters to how they approach their day. You're either Tigger or you're Eeyore. And if you're coming in like Eeyore day after day, you're not going to get your team because motivated because your attitude is contagious. You know, I've never seen you, and I know you have an offstage mode, you know, especially when you're doing pickle shots, right? But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but when you're on stage, you know, we're expected to perform. And doctors, I can tell you, if you want the best from your team, you've got to walk in with a Tigger attitude that, hey, I'm here to help, I'm happy to see you, I'm glad you're here. But if you're coming in because, you know, you got to and it's, oh, heck, another day and, oh, we're going to have cancellations and, you know, da 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 without directing your team and being positive and finding a way to connect, you're dead in the water and you're not going to get uh, good people. You're not going to retain good people. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I give that exam. I mean, I've been on the back end of this for a dentist and I was married to him and still was like, oh my goodness. You know, you walk in in the morning, the schedule fell apart. Okay. All of a sudden the schedule, fell there's two ways dentists can handle it. One is, are you kidding me? The schedule fell apart again. I thought you guys reactivated or, you know, I confirmed all these appointments. This is ridiculous. Da, da, da. Everybody's going to run and scurry and hide. I'm going to my office. I ain't talking to you today. You're in a bad mood. You just squashed any productivity in the attitude of the day versus you go, all right, schedule fell apart. Well, that sucks. What can we do about it? All right, what hygiene, what can you guys do? Front office, great, what can you do? What systems broke we need to fix? Where are we gonna go? We're all jumping in and we're doing this. So it, you, it really, and it's hard sometimes, Kelly. I know what it is. You know, it's like oh, with yeah. your kids. So when your kids come to you and they're like, will you read me a book? And you're like, oh my yeah, God, it's the end of the day, right? Yeah. But you yeah. got to suck it up, just like you'd suck it up for a patient if they walked in with their crown on their hand saying, my crown just fell off for the 10th time. You got to You got to give that to your team. I'll give you a third one. We don't have any patients till 10 o'clock. Shut the door, put on the answer machine. Come on, we're all going to breakfast. We're going to talk about what we can do so this doesn't happen again, right. in the future, which is kind of a combination. You know, it's, it's funny you said about the end of the day, I used to be on the road all the time. And when my son, Logan, he's sitting over here behind me. Uh, I'd come home after, you know, traveling, planes, trains, automobiles, you know, the drill, come yeah. home for four days on the road. I'd walk in the door and he'd be like, dad, can we play catch? And my mentality was, you know, no, you know, I'm mm -hmm. thinking he wants to play for 20 hours. He just wanted to go out and throw the ball for a few minutes. Uh -huh. Once I kind of Adam kicked me in the ass and said, change your attitude. You uh -huh. know, the boy misses you. He doesn't care what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I play catch a lot more often. And I'm going to tease him because he's sitting here. His arm still stinks. He's not a good thrower. So Kelly, I, I set a new goal for myself. I am not a book reader. I'm not. And, and I haven't been in college in a very an author. I'm, I'm an author, but I'm not a book reader. Funny, right? I'm an audible listener, I guess. But I just decided, I just got back from the Santra leadership and I'm like, I need to make some changes. And so I'm reading a new book. I just started it. Um, it was given to me for my birthday, but it's called Atomic Habits. And it talks about... You know, I'm a goal setter, like I want to go there, but the goal is not going to get you to where you're going. It's your daily habits that are going to get you there. And I'm only the first chapter in and I'm already like, okay, so a habit for me, for example, just total side notice to pick up my phone and go on social media when I'm drinking coffee in the morning. And today I put my phone down. I don't know what's going on on social media and I'm reading the book with my cup of coffee. So it's the little things that you can work with your team on. You're not going to get big wins all the time. But if you say to them, hey, guys, I've been guilty of this. You're guilty of this. Today, let's do this much better. Or let's do this many more phone calls. Or let's work on this part of the schedule. Or let's have a meeting and talk about stuff. You know, we want to work for owners. We want to work for leaders who are vulnerable, transparent, that, that, that are the real you. And it's okay to say to your team, 
I, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm trying to figure it out. You know, I, I don't know how many times my parents said to me, and we've never been parents before. We're trying to figure this out. And I would respect them for that. Like, okay, great. I'm here with you. Let's do it. You know, more than I know it all because I'm the dentist, yeah. you know, you're not opening that up for the team to be part of the, you know, helping you grow. Well, I love hearing you say that because I told my kids so many times, I've never been the dad of a teenage daughter or a teenage son. And I screwed up when I yelled at you or I this or that and forgive me. And, you know, mm -hmm. we make those mistakes. And sometimes I didn't do it right, even multiple times, you know. Yeah. And, and doctors, that's the thing. You've got to find what fits your team. And it's having a courageous conversation about what makes people want to work here. And, and I, I would, you know, as far as my kind of final thought would be, you need to sit down with your team right now and really ask them, what do I need to do or what do you want from me in the next 6, 12, or 18 months that are going to build a long-term relationship between me and you? Because I want you, Laura, working with me forever. Mm -hmm. You know, Anna and I took a little uh, weekend not too long ago. You know, we, we're coming up on 27 years of marriage July 1st, which today is kind of an accomplishment, right? Congratulations, and, and, yeah. And, you know, I know why you married me but what do I got to do to keep you married to me? You know, what, what am I doing? What am I not doing? What do you need more of me so yeah. that I can, you know, keep you as a happily married wife? Cause you know, I've married way above my, my <laughs> an awesome woman. Uh, but what do I have to do to, to stay married to you? You know, what, yeah. what do you need for me? And I think and doctors, you got to have that conversation with your team if you really want to keep them. So Laura, I know you, you know, you've given me plenty of your time, but, what are some of your closing thoughts? And then I'd like to open it up to some questions, but what sure. should you do? And, you know, just today was all about how do you find, hire, and keep great staff mm -hmm. in a real competitive market? I think that, I mean, we've already kind of talked about it. It's going to be hard to hire. It's, it's not going to get better for a while. So I love how we ended this or come into the end of this. Focus on the team you've got. Those are the ones there and within your four walls. Like, let's, let's really work on how we can make it better for them, keep them long term. And you're going to find people and they're going to come in, but that's not going to be the make or break of your practice. It's the team that you've got. My suggestion or addition that we haven't talked about is um, I know that doctors are like, oh my gosh, one more thing on my plate. They bring me problems. They grab me between, a, you know, patients. They, if I have a meeting, they're going to tell me all the things that are broken. So I would suggest and, and go to your team and say, hey, listen, here's how we're going to do this going forward. Anytime you bring me a challenge or an issue, I don't like to call it a problem, but a challenge or an issue, schedule fell apart, something broke, toilets overflowing, whatever it is. Every time you bring me that challenge or issue, bring me two or three solutions to it. And there's two reasons to that. One is for you, so they're not just dumping stuff on you, like, here you go, Kelly, here's the problem. But they're like, you know, coming and they're thinking through them. And then you can help them become leaders in your organization. You can help them become problem solvers. You can say, you know what? I like those three ideas. I pick the second one. And the idea behind this is we want our, you want your team members to start to think like an owner, to start to take issues on and look for solutions. And then you that way, your ability to want to communicate to them, your interest in communicating will go up because it's not like, oh boy, here they go. They want a meeting because they're asking for a raise or they've got a problem. But instead, they're bringing the options to you too. And you can start seeing how they're thinking and what's their thought process. And you can guide them. You can learn to trust them because a year from now, we're hoping we're out of this. You've got great team members who are running your practice as if they're owners, and you can bring these new people in, and they're going to make sure that your culture and what you want is 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 maintained because they've taken the they've taken on that leadership and that ownership of your business. Okay, Laura. Before we open up for questions, how can everyone get your book? It's well, it's called it's Hiring it's Without Hesitation. Hesitation. So just go to Hiring Without Hesitation. And then any questions you have of what we have at Front Office Rocks is over at Front Office Rocks. And Kelly, I want to tell you about something new. Um, I that saw it today. What's that? I saw it today. Your huddle, right? You saw it? Okay, I good. I did. Heck yeah. So you and I are big fans of dental intel, super big fans of dental intel. And so I feel like I'm like, cheating on my friend or something a little bit because I know they have amazing huddle, but I just think there's a lot of offices who aren't using DI um, that could use this. So Morning Huddle Motivators is our brand new product. It's powered by Front Office Rocks. It's $14.99 a month to help you run your huddle in the morning. 
little short video that you can play once a week, every day, whatever you want to help get your team started on the right foot. So I'm super glad that you saw that. So that's my new, uh, my new. I think, oh, yeah. I was going to ask you about it because I'm excited to see what it's all about and, and kind of go from there. So that, you know, congratulations. You're always turning out great stuff. I, you know, like I love the eye and what it pulls, but I also have a, a huddle report because you and I both know there are things that doctors need to know that aren't on that huddle report. So right. I'm excited to see what you have. You're always, always, <laughs> you're always on the leading edge. So, all right. So what I'm going to do, uh, doctors, I don't know if you have questions, but if you want to unmute yourself, uh, ask D Laura or myself any questions that you have. We'll take a few questions. Sometimes we get crickets, you know, no one wants to speak, but we'll, we'll ask those questions. But uh, I was going to actually ask Ludwig, what's in the glass that you're drinking? Oh. <laughs> so I just got, I just got home. So it's wine. <laughs> He's here yes. in Charlotte. So mm. yeah. actually I have a question for you, Laura. Mm -hmm. uh, this right now, it is a difficult time to hire generally because I mean, there's a lot of incentive for people, I would say not to come back to work. Right. So for somebody who's looking to grow their staff, I mean, what would you recommend? Well, um, kind of uh, my book. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my book. Um, uh, Make sure you're doing everything we talked about in this webinar in your hiring process. You have to make sure that you're doing all of the steps and you're continually interviewing. You've got the right culture. You're continually posting ads. Your team's out talking about it. Actually, Kelly, we didn't even really mention that. Um, you should be posting on social media. Your, your uh, website should have that you're hiring. You should be having your team members share it on there because your dental assistants hang out with other, other dental assistants. Your hygienists are connected to other hygienists. So make sure everybody's talking about it. And that is something I think we should be doing even when you're not hiring. Everybody, you should always be accepting resumes. You should always be wanting an influx of people coming in. Can um, I ask you a question on that, Laura? Yeah. I've seen a couple people that have, were, were always hiring on their website and a series of questions. As a patient, I think then you're a revolving door, perhaps thought that way as a staff. Right. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think that at all because I'm a growing company, I'm a growing office. I'm gonna give you a good example. If you guys wanna search for, it's called D for D, D for dentist, D-E-E, -E, D -E -E for dentist. Her name is Dr. It's D something or another, D-E-E, -E, and it's in Las Vegas, they're in Las Vegas. Um, he is a dental office manager at ADOM with me, and she's the dentist, DEE. -E. They're always they're always accepting resumes. They're always interviewing candidates, and they never have a problem finding candidates. Now, I haven't talked to them in the last three months, so I'm going to put that disclaimer in there. But they are always their culture is so amazing. They actually host an open house once a quarter, always open house and their team members can bring friends and family and coworkers. And the, the open house isn't for patients. The open house is for other professionals to come see their practice because they have a waiting list. They have a stack of resumes that they can pull from when it's time to hire. Now their culture is great. They're always accepting resumes. People have gotten a chance to come in and see them. There we go. So they're probably on there. Let's see if um, they've got any job. I'm sure they have openings might be on their social media, but this office, if you, there's, that's the husband right there. They do an amazing job. I have it in one of my presentations about how they, how they recruit for team members. They do an open house. And so anyway, Kelly, my, my thing is, is if people say, it always seems like you're hiring. I'm always planning for growth. I'm always planning. So it's not that I've got a lot of turnover. It's not that I'm trying to replace people. It's that we're always open. We're always planning on growing right? We want to be prepared to serve our patients better. We're always looking for great candidates. One of the fun things we did one time, Laura, is we took a pair of uh, uh, Crocs and we had them the color of the team and we put a sign out. If you know someone who could fill these shoes, uh -huh. right on the front desk and we use that in our social media. And sure enough, I got a cousin, I got a niece, I got a friend, you know, how do they send in a resume? So I think that it's just, everyone's hiring right now. So if you, I mean, the bonus is great, but it's, you know, I could go get a bonus. If I could. One tool. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I there's, so there's going to give you 400. What's a dentist going to give, right? Exactly. 
Yeah. Do you recommend? Uh, do you recommend hiring bonus? Um, it, yes, but I don't think that's what you should you should um, lean on. Like, if somebody's coming to you saying, "I'll come work for you if you give me the bonus," and that's their that's their that's yeah no yeah. We talked a little bit earlier on this, doctor, um, uh, about willing to pay for your experience, but make sure you clarify what is the expectation above and beyond. Okay. And the, a, a bonus or a hiring or signing bonus is only one tool in a basket full of tools that you need to use. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think to be honest, if it was me right now, if I was hiring for my dental office, my mindset would be the good people are working somewhere else. So yeah. what can I do to attract the good people to come to me? Because the, just because they're working there doesn't mean they're happy. Yep. I so have an office. I have an office up in uh, Morganton, northern Mich uh, northern in the mountains of North Carolina. One of his gals' husband got really sick real quick. Decided to retire. I reached out to three hygienists in the area and said, "Hey, if you know anybody." And by six o'clock today, we had two applicants that we didn't have through friends of friends and, and so forth. So yeah. And some of that is just, I mean, you should have a social, I know this, I'm like, you guys are probably like, oh my gosh, we know, but like your social presence matters, not just for patients. Like, are you doing something fun with your team? Are you sharing it on social media? Because I might work for the crotchety old dentist down the street and he is boring as all get out. And I don't like the environment. And I'm looking at my friend who works for you, who's a dental assistant. And I'm like, oh my gosh, they have so much fun over there, you know, and maybe you pay a little better or maybe you have a bonus and that's the, the incentive I need, but that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to recruit people to you. You're trying to attract them, you know? Dr. St. John, I want to see a good TikTok video of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know you and your team got it in you. You can do it. <laughs> okay, we'll work on that. <laughs> and I and, I, and again, and I think one of the things you can do for all of us that are on here, you know, we have a social media presence, Schwartz Consulting Group. You know, post that you're looking for a great superstar. And oh, and Laura, I right. love your brand, but I hate you for it because I can't say a rock star and not think of you uh -huh. every time I say it. But uh but don't be afraid to put that you're looking for a rock star to join our team, you know, and do you know somebody? And then, you know, you know, we've got a big network yes. of people who may come and look for you. And, and in all honesty, and I say this to all my doctors, if somebody works for our team, but they apply for you, well, then they're not happy where they're at. And that's nothing yeah, okay. to feel bad about. Kelly, there's Thank one you. other thing we didn't talk about that I want to make sure too that we talk about. Don't Please. only hire for full time. Be open to part-time because especially for hygienists, they, if you put full time and they're working part-time somewhere else, they're not going to apply to you because you're looking for full time. Be open to part or full time. Here's what I did. I got all of my hygienists, every single one of them. They started working for me one day a week because they were working somewhere else four days a week. And then we got busy. They liked us. They went to two days a week. Then they got busy and then they left the other job and then they became our full-time. So I know you're looking for full-time potentially, but everybody's closed on Fridays. They're not, you know, like start weaning them over, let them get into your environment and then just be like, oh my gosh, this is so much better than my other office. And that's another way you could get people in. And, and, and yeah, I mean, if you need four days a week and you get two to do two, it still works. Exactly. So, all right, other questions? Anybody just need to unmute first? Dr. Joe, Dr. Tyson. Hey, can you guys see me? Hey, hear me? Dr. Tyson, how are you? Doing well, thanks. How are things in Dallas? Oh, very well. Very well. I, was just, um, I was just there yesterday. Oh, great. <laughs> nice weather yesterday here for once in a little bit. Well, uh, I, got, I got to fly in in the rain two, three, on Sunday, so it was like landing. Yeah. <laughs> With the current climate, with the unemployment benefits being the way they are, a lot of offices that are hiring are having a hard time getting applicants to actually show up to working interviews because of the, as long as they show and prove that they're, they're applying or trying to get a job, um, they can continue with their unemployment benefits. So a lot of people are committing on the phone and then no showing for their working interviews or their, their interviews uh, won't show up. So what do you recommend we do in this climate right now to try and commit someone or try to know 
try to weed through those people so that you're not wasting your time so much. Um, well, so, and that's what Kelly and I were talking about we, earlier. We um, talk, Kelly, this, uh, yeah. So one of the things we talked about Tyson, when they first, you want to get back to him within the first 24 hours of them applying. And the mm, first okay. step, both Laura and I agree on is either a phone call or a zoom call after hours to see where they stand and then agree to a, an amicable time that is easy for them to come to. For example, if you work nine to five Monday through Thursday, and so do they, and you ask them to come in four o'clock on a Thursday, they can't leave work without being in danger of losing where they're at. And both Laura and I agree that you're not necessarily looking for people who are looking, you're looking for people who are working and leaving. And so once you talk to me on the phone, then maybe you agree to work, you know, I have Fridays off, I have Mondays off, I can come in on a Saturday and then come in with another staff member, you know, your wife or somebody, but do an interview then uh, with them at a time once you've screened them on the phone so you're not wasting time, but not scaring them off to where they can't come in because they're committed to a job. And then okay. I, would, I would also just, we all know that this is fact, right? We all know this is happening. And so what I would do is talk to your team about this or whoever's involved in your hiring process. And when somebody doesn't show up for the interview, go, see, I knew they weren't going to show up. See, I knew that's how it is because we're building this culture of like, see, see, nobody good. So just expect eight out of 10 are not going to show up. Just expect to figure out a process, whether it's they need to talk on the phone to you first or they, they need to do a Zoom interview or you know, figure it out and just assume right now they're not going to show up. And when they do like, yay, that's amazing, you know, but if we continue, because I see it all the time, I'm on the dental spouses group and every time someone doesn't show up, someone goes, another one didn't show up. I'm like, we know that. <laughs> like, we know it. So why, it's like saying, oh, we have another cancellation in the schedule. If we keep focusing on it, that's going to become the culture. So just be really careful about that and just expect it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's just what we're up against and then set up systems so you're not wasting your time. You're not sitting there waiting for someone not to show up again. Do a Zoom call, do a phone interview, whatever to then find that good candidate who you think will show up. Okay. And you have Sounds a great good. team and you got a great office. So we just got to find you the right person. Mm -hmm. All right, other questions. Dr. Joe, I think you came unmuted for a moment. I see Sarit is on board with us. Hi Sarit, haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> you know, recently had a hire uh, quite a few new staff. Um, and one thing, you know, that I guess that helped me out was a lot of them look at your website and your reviews. I mean, yeah. they want to know what type of office you have, what type of reviews do you have from patients. So I think that's a part of reflection too. If you right. treat your patients well, um, you know, I think they, I think they seem they will you portray that you're you're gonna your, uh, treat your team members well too. Because right. uh, a couple of the people that I did hire and uh, offered positions, that was one of the things that they did at the website and our, my reviews and you know what i would put that in your ad you know want to see how great we are check out our reviews too like the idea of the ad job ad or getting the mm -hmm. word out is to get people to come to be attracted to you so if your reviews are great put that in there our patients love us check our reviews right like just put it out there because maybe somebody hadn't thought about that. Then they actually go look at your reviews and they're like, Oh my gosh, they're amazing over there. I want to work in that office. So I think that's a really great idea. Yeah. I, had a, lot, I had a lot of people with, from different backgrounds even apply for like front office position. I mean, people who just wanted to get away from what is that, like banking or, you know, another sector and they just wanted, uh, I think something different. And I think also like, more or less evening hours or weekend hours or where, where they were working at that point. So I did have a lot of uh, people uh, outside of dentistry or just looking to try, you know what, maybe I will try dentistry. Uh, field. Uh, Joe, you got that Northern Michigan thing going on in the background out there. I'm hearing frogs and birds. <laughs> I know. You know, you, you bring up a great point. I know staff look at reviews, but Laura, your point, I've never heard anyone suggested putting the interview, the reviews in the ad and so maybe yeah. put a link to your Google reviews in your ad. Here's what people say about our team and our practice. I think that's a, that's a gem right there that I've never thought of doing right. an ad. The other thing, and you mentioned this, um, Joe, that I just, I hadn't mentioned earlier. When I talk about in my book, I say, cast the net wide, um, especially for front office, cast the net wide. And what that means is there's, 
the glowing book there, hiring without hesitation. Um, what I mean by that is if you put in your ad two years of EagleSoft experience required or two years of this required or a year of this, you're limiting the job pool. So make sure that when you write your ad, do you really need two years of EagleSoft experience or do you really need that they answered five phone lines or can we teach them, right? What can you teach them versus what do they need to come with? Because I think a lot of times we make the requirements so much that the, the actual people who can actually apply to the job is smaller. We can teach them EagleSoft, we can teach them dental. Oh, speaking of that, Kelly, I have another one a course that's new to dental. I finally did it after 12 years where I, it's like a four hour course. I teach codes, I teach surfaces, I teach teeth numbers, I teach uh, insurance. I teach the basics of what I wish I would have known my first day in a dental office. So there's no excuse now. We can, we can teach them. I didn't know this stuff when I started, I learned it. So for the front, you know, you can teach them. I think the other thing too is Get creative for a dental assistant. Could you bring somebody in and teach them? Can yeah. you do an apprenticeship up and lead? like, let's, let's get creative right now because it's going to be tough. And what are some other options we can look at? Almost like an internship or on the right. job training. So I guess my ad of, if you can walk, talk and chew gum, please apply. That might work. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Right. And smile. If you can smile on a regular basis. Yeah. Matter of fact, I, I, when the environment was better, I used to tell my doctors all the time, let them sit in the reception area. And if they got that, you know, RBF that you mentioned earlier, that's not the one you want to hire. But if I'm going to hire two applicants, one has pretty teeth, one has ugly, I'm going to hire the ugly teeth, fix them and make them mm -hmm. a rock star for my practice. Exactly. So, all right. Yeah. Other questions. All right. Well, Laura, I really want to say thank you. You brought so much knowledge. Uh, really appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and post this on our YouTube page and our Facebook page after we get it all recorded. Um, for all of you doctors who took the time to jump on today, we really appreciate it. Laura, um, we can get your book on Amazon. I assume on your website, you've got great products out there. I love working with you uh, and your team. They're just, you know, we do the in-office coaching. Laura does everything to support behind. We refer to Laura when you've got somebody who's been through the coaching, but then needs a little follow-up and online learning, Laura's, Laura's got some great, great stuff. Almost too much. That's how much she's got. Uh -huh. I'll okay. stop, Kelly. I'll just, I'll uh, stop. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. All right. So I'm going to wrap it up here. If anybody has any questions, reach out to me, reach out to Laura. We're here to help you. Laura, as always, thank you. Anna and I love you. We appreciate all you're doing. Thank um, you. Keep it rocking, young lady. I appreciate all of you having me on, and this was a lot of fun. So definitely come over at Front Office Rocks if you've got questions, and we'll get you any answers that you guys need for anything. And congratulations on your new book. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, guys.